Hi there, I'm Patrick McMurray, Little Oyster Shucker here, and I'm going to show you a little bit of my world, the Oyster 101. Here in Toronto, we're allowed to use, in, in North America as well, we can pick up five different species of oysters. So at Starfish, I like to try to show all five species when they're seasonally available. There are different times of year when they're going to be available and different times when they're not. Not necessarily are you spoke to the uh, months without an R. You can get great oysters all year long. The first one that we normally use in North America is your North American East Coast Oyster. The Palette of Toronto leans towards this type of oyster. Perfect balance of salt and sweet. It's got a lovely little teardrop shape, deep cup, flat cup, very uh, nice texture to it, and a nice balance of salt and sweet. The next one most people will understand and know is the Pacific Oyster. This is called a Chrysostra gigas species. This one has a flavor range of ocean sea salt, sweet cream, melon and cucumber, and various different flavors of that. I get them as well from Europe. European rock oysters are also known as the Pacific. That's the species that they use to grow the rock oysters as well. The next most popular that we have here is a Kumamoto oyster, Chrysostra sakima species. This is originally from Japan in the 1920s. It is grown actively in Puget Sound, in Washington State, Oregon, and down as far as Baja, California. Best come from Puget Sound area. Most uh, purebred Kumos should come in with a little cat's paw fluting on the bottom shell like this, and a very flat top, deep cup, petite little morsel of the sea ocean sea salt and more of the sweet cream and uh, melon flavor with a little bit of vegetable notes in the finish. Then we have the European flats, Ostera edulis is the Latin name for this one. These are Galway flats coming out of Ireland. We can also get Loch Ryans from Scotland and occasionally we can get some English oysters and then Belongs from France. In the States, they grow the flat oysters in Maine and over in Oregon and Washington State as well. Maybe a couple other little places where they grow them. The wonderful thing about these ones is they have such a big bold flavor of ocean. Ocean sea salts, a little bit of the sweet cream, more of an earthy note, very seaweedy and a dry metallic flavor, often finishing off in either copper or brassy notes. Absolutely fantastic. When you open this oyster, the Galway Flat, you can actually smell and sense the ocean sea air. It speaks mostly of ocean. That's what I find with these oysters. And the last and hardest and most rare oyster, I think, in North America, the Olympia oyster. This is called an Ostera uh, conchophalia. It's very small at a four to five year growth here. It's about the size of a loonie, a one dollar piece. This thing comes off with such a complex flavor. I really add, uh, tell people not to have any lemon or sauce on it at all if you really want to experience this oyster to its fullest. It really just melts across the palate as you pop it open. You experience ocean sea salt, the sweet cream, a fresh cut grass, very vegetal notes, almost floral in its essence, right in the middle. Dries off in the end with a little bit of earthiness and a dry metallic finish that lasts for minutes, up to about a minute and a half or so. So those are the five different species we can get in oysters here in North America. The uh, Chrysostra virginicus, the East Coast oysters, range from New Brunswick down to the Gulf of Mexico, hundreds of different types of oysters, many different types of flavors that you can experience. Same with the Pacifics, they grow from Alaska all the way down to Baja, California, and actually is the most grown oyster around the world. You find them in France, throughout Europe, down in South Africa, all the way over into India, you can find them just about everywhere. Anyone that grows a native oyster that can't grow them and sell them all year long, will grow a rock oyster, the Pacifics. It's the number two oyster usually, but sometimes becomes the number one based on flavor and texture. So these two have multiple different varieties within them. These three are more on the rare side, really only a handful of people, probably about a dozen to two dozen uh, in North America, and then uh, a couple hundred over in Europe. Kumamoto's really only two or three, four different growers, that's it, that you're gonna see, and then the Olympia's only got about two. So depending on the different oysters that you have, you can have a wonderful different type of oyster plate that you can offer up to your customers.